boy do I have a cool project for you today. So this scrap buster quilt is an I Spy Chinese coin quilt. Now it is a very versatile pattern. You can use jelly rolls to make it. You could use regular scraps. You could do control where you use maybe just purple. Uh, but for this particular one, I made it an I Spy quilt because it's a lot of fun and I just was inspired by some of the fabrics I had. One really cool thing about this quilt is it's made with two and a half inch strips. So it's very versatile. But before we get started, my name is Chris O'Neill from Sew the Distance. Thank you so much for joining me. Please consider subscribing, giving me that thumbs up, commenting below. It all supports my channel. So for the supplies for this particular quilt, you will need 122 and a half inch by seven inch strips, seven two and a half inch strips by the width of fabric. And from those, you're gonna cut five of them down to 40 and a half inches and two of them down to 34 and a half inches. And I'll put all this information below in the description so you can see. I will also put some timestamps on this video so you can move around as you wish to see the different sections and how I make this particular quilt. So let's get started. Okay, so to make this quilt, you're going to be making it in strips. So I have this one strip set and it is made up of 20 bars or 20 coins, if you will, because I know that's the name of the quilt pattern, and each one is different. And I decided to go with an I Spy theme kind of by accident. Let me show you what happened. So I have this giant container of strips. So when I'm cutting down my scraps, you can see I put all of my leftover pieces or leftover jelly rolls or anything in here. And yes, I have tried to organize this a few times and it just doesn't stay organized. So much like my floss bin, I do not keep this very organized. I just shove them in here. Probably not the best practice, but that's what I do. Anyway, I started going through this, pulling out scraps, and I noticed I had quite a few novelty print strips, which I've already pulled out for this tutorial, and it inspired me to make a quilt that's an ice spy quilt. Unfortunately though, <laughs> even though my goal was to use up some of these scraps. Unfortunately, I didn't really even make a dent in this and I had to go to my actual fabric stash, which I also have a huge bin of novelty prints. I'm not sure why, but I do. So let me move this out of the way and I'll talk to you about the strips first and I'll talk to you about using other fabrics or other scraps to make this. So these are the strips that I found and I started looking at them and thinking about how I would put this together in a I Spy quilt because there's some really cool patterns and I added some flowers but I also added like fish and all kinds of different things. Even baby prints and I think there's an Elmo piece in here. But anything goes basically, as long as it's positive and as long as it's bright and kids would like it. So that was the lens I was looking at. So I found these strips and I decided I wanted six inch bars. But to do that, I also decided, or after playing with it a little bit, that we're gonna cut seven inch bars and then cut them down. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So when I'm pulling out these fabrics, I'm looking for motifs that are gonna fall within that seven inch range. So all I did was take a mat with lines on it, like this one here, get that lined up. Okay, and I estimated seven inches. I just looked on here and cut on that seven inch line, just like this. It doesn't have to be necessarily straight because we are gonna trim these down. This allowed me to have a little bit more flexibility with the design and not necessarily having the stress or anxiety of lining this up each time for an entire row of 20 strips. So what I did was I cut it down into manageable sizes and I just kept going. So as I found another one, I'd make sure it was press pressed for the most part, I just cut this and let's see another one. We'll go with this apple. And they're about seven inches. And I went through all of my strips like that. Now a few things that I wanna point out to you, and this is a really good one to do this with. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Something like this, I wanted to have a little bit of the motif in it. So say I cut my seven inches here, you're gonna lose a lot of that pattern in it. But if I want a butterfly or something like that, I wanna make sure that that's within my seven inch range. So for example, I really like, let's see, I really like this butterfly actually for this. Oh, this one's nice too. I like this one. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna cut here, 
Count seven over, one, two, three, four, and cut here. Now keep in mind, you're gonna have seam allowances, so a little bit of this butterfly is gonna be cut off, but the majority of it will stay on. So I do take that into account and make sure that I consider that. So I would just keep going until I had enough for this quilt. For one strip, there are 20, and that's gonna allow for a 40 inch strip. And I did that because then you can do sashing strips that are 40 inches, which are the width of fabric. So it makes it a little bit easier and possibly even a little bit economical. So let's move this out of the way and talk about if you're using yardage or other scraps that aren't strips and you need to make them into strip sets. I pulled a few examples that I thought would work really well in explaining this. And one is this flamingo print. Even though this is adorable, it's too large for this because if we took our ruler you know, we just get the flamingo heads, which could be cute, but I don't know. I think the whole appeal or sweetness of this fabric is how big they are. So I'll save this for a different project. Another example are these bears, which, oh gosh, this fabric is so old. I, this is, oh, it's gotta be at least 20 years old. <laughs> I've had it in my stash that long. So I don't think you can get it anymore, but it is a really cute fabric, but you can see it's directional. It has a top and a bottom which for this quilt that I made, I paid attention to that. You wouldn't have to, but I did for this. So I can't cut it, or I guess I could, but I'm not going to cut it this way because you'd lose these cute little bears. So I wanna cut it this way, okay, across this way. And I also wanna make sure when I'm using my ruler, and I highly suggest a two and a half inch ruler, they are great because you can cut up both sides. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that I have a motif that I really think would be cute in this. So let's start by cutting about my seven inches. I'm just gonna use another ruler to figure that out. It's like right here. And then I'm gonna find a cute motif, motif that I really like. So I love this little guy who's picking flowers. I'm gonna make sure it's within the seam allowance and I'm gonna cut it out. So there is some waste of fabric, but I don't know, it's worth it, I think, to get these cute little motifs. But then you also have fabrics like this that it really doesn't matter. It's an all over print. Same is true with uh, this puppy toes or puppy paw fabric. It really doesn't matter which way you go, they're all over and it would work great. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to sew four of these units together. And I work in units of four because it's more manageable, which will make sense when I show you how I trim them down. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lay my four out in a way I like, and it really doesn't matter. Lights, darks don't matter because you want it to kind of blend because it's an ice spy quilt. So you want it to you know, be fun for the kids to find something. So I'm just going to make sure everything is going the direction I want. You don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. And I'm just going to put right sides together, flip it up like this, and I'm going to sew here and here. So you can see I have these sewn together, and I'm just going to line them up as best as possible. Again, we cut them about seven inches, so they're not gonna line up perfectly. That's why we did that, so we have a little bit of uh, wiggle room. I'm gonna sew along this edge, and I'll show you how we square it up. So here we go. This is our unit. You can see it's all sewn together. I pressed it. I just let the seams go whichever direction they wanted to. It's not gonna matter. We don't have to line anything up. You can even open the seams if you're more comfortable with that. That's totally up to you. So now I'm gonna take my six inch wide ruler and I'm going to lay it on this piece of fabric. And what I'm looking for is straight lines in my block. Okay, I'm gonna line this up on those lines and I'm gonna hold this firm, make sure it's straight and trim it down. Now you may be wondering why I'm not doing the whole strip at once. And I don't do that just because it becomes really hard to line everything up and to get it straight. For me, this is a much more manageable chunk and I don't know, it just makes more sense in my brain. You could do six, you could do 10, you can do more if you want, or you could do less if you want. Uh, it's totally up to you. Even though it's a very forgiving block, for me, this just makes it more manageable. So I make a bunch of these, 
actually five in all to make a strip and I sew them together. Here I have a whole bunch made already. So I'll just line this up, flip it on, and now I have to be careful to line this up well because these are all trimmed down, okay? So I would sew here. Another tip is to clip the ends here, the part that you're not sewing. You can just put some clips on there. That'll hold it steady and hold it straight as you sew this seam. So I sew this seam and then I just keep going and going until I have a strip set that is 20 pieces long or 40 inches long. <laughs> and then I make four of these for this quilt. Now, if you want the quilt big, bigger, of course, you just make more. If you want it smaller, make less. But this gives a nice range of different fabrics. And for me, it was a challenge to use different fabrics for each of these coins or squares because I think that just makes it a little more fun. You could use two of each and play it as a matching game or you could just, you know, take whatever you had and use that too. It really is a freeing quilt and allows you to do a lot of different things with it. Once you have all four of your strips all sewn together, we're going to add the sashing strips. So these are 40 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide. So all I'm going to do is lay my sashing strip on top and I'm going to pin it all the way down. And the reason I pin it is because I want it to be nice and straight. I want to square everything up. So this is the exact length that this should be. And that way I can ease in some of the seams if I need to. So I'm going to do that on all of these. After they're pinned, I will sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance, press them to set the seams, and then I will keep sewing them together. Because of some recording difficulties, I did not get this last part on camera, but after you add the middle sashing strips, you're gonna add the top and the bottom, and they each measure two and a half inches by 34 and a half inches. So you'll add them just like you did the other sashing strips, and then you're done. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know. Make sure that you consider making it bigger. If you want to make a bigger quilt, you could make even a bed size quilt, which would be a lot of fun. You can even swap different fabrics with other quilters if you don't have 120 novelty prints to choose from. It's just a very versatile quilt and it's a lot of fun to make. If you have any questions, please ask and I'd love to hear from you and if you're going to be making a quilt like this. So as promised, I'm gonna show you the quilt that I'm gonna feature next week on Lessons from an Old Quilt, and here it is. Let's see, you can see all of the coins that are here on this quilt. Isn't this a lot of fun? I can't wait to share this one with you. It is a tied quilt. It's something I bought at an auction, and it's, it's really cool, it's a lot of fun. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you make some time to sew, and I will see you soon. Bye.